Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. And this is Megan. And an episode that we know a lot of you have been anticipating for. Yeah. This is all about our time at the house we lived on in Spring Branch. Lived yeah. in, in Spring Branch. Uh, if you don't know what the hell Spring Branch is, it's a small town between Blanco, Texas town that I grew up in, mm-hmm. um, and in San Antonio. It's like a midway point. So if you're driving from San Antonio to go into Blanco, which is my, my like I said, my town, uh, you should stop by Spring Branch. But the house that we uh we lived. say house, but it's not really a house. It was, it was a trailer. It was like a nice trailer. Yeah. Well, I mean, it had a, like a concrete foundation and stuff yeah. like that. So, I mean, well. Like it's like in between a trailer stone and Stone and cement. So, like, yeah. someone actually, tra- you know, made the effort to make it look somewhat nice with a nice porch and everything. Like that. Yeah. What's, I don't, a single white? Yeah. It was, a, it was a double white. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So. But we always call it the house because, I mean. Yeah. It, it, it gave the vibes as a house. It was like, the inside was made like a trailer, but the outside looked like a house. But no, it was the, uh, at the house we lived on when we lived in the Spring Branch. But funny enough, the house we lived on, why do you say lived on? on? The landing we lived on in the house was very close to the highway, the Highway 281. And I guess to wherever that, that turn off is where the, the, uh, the, the light is. But anyway, it wasn't very far off the highway. Yeah. And where we lived was kind of up up the hill. And then behind us was just a bunch of woods. That lead to, uh, I think there was a trail that led to some guy's farm or something no okay so how it was, was trying to give up people a okay. visual landscape yes so how it was was you turn down this road right it's just like a long i mean you could see the front of the road to the end of the road from the highway but it was pretty lengthy owner that rented to us the trailer he owned i don't know if you guys have ever seen like the rental sheds he had that at the very as soon as you would turn off the highway there was the rent a sheds and then you would keep going back and then you would hit our trailer. And then to the left, further back was, um, I guess the neighbors. I think what happened was like they owned the land, but they would only go there on vacations. So they sold part of the land to the guy that owns the trailer and the sheds. And so, yeah, so it was like two separate properties on one. It was like a big ranch style would you call it a ranch yeah yeah like a ranch style situation and those people were actually really nice they ever told they always told us if we ever needed to go on their property don't don't worry about it go on it you know there were woods behind the house that probably led to somewhere else yes so the woods actually led to a subdivision that was on the other side but you would have to go through a big chunk of woods to get there yeah uh the reason why we decided to talk about this episode uh, is all our paranormal experiences when we lived there, which was a lot. Mm. Uh, you want to c- in comparison, our time, uh, well, I, actually, I didn't live with you at the time, but when we were dating and I would be over at your house because um, yeah. I worked overnight and you, you didn't, but I just want to spend time with you. So yeah. I kind of just watched TV while you slept in a sense yeah. like that. But um, those experiences were intense, and that was in San Antonio. The Spring Branch one, when we lived together there, that... It was probably more than what we experienced here. Yeah. 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 Well, it, 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 where we live now, anyway. If I have to go back, like I would say that the Spring Branch house was probably the most activity I've ever had in any house. And it's definitely the darkest stuff that I've witnessed. Like I've seen some dark stuff in, you know, houses in the past that I've lived in, in the San Antonio house in particular. Um, which any San Antonio listeners, the house that we lived in in San Antonio was in the Stone Oak subdivision, which is a (laughs) big... Back and make people scared of there. Yeah, <laughs> I live there. <laughs> uh, well, there was a rumor that that area was built on top of a native burial ground. So, I don't know how true that is. That was kind of like the rumor, you know, around the neighborhood. Yeah. So the reason why we even moved to Spring Branch was uh, we had lived in Stone Oak for maybe like two years. You did. Um, yes, but this was before I was dating Isaac, and my parents had moved there. And for whatever reason, they decided to jack the rent up like $400. And so my parents, my dad was in a weird spot with his job. And so my parents had no choice but to start looking. And so they thought, well, it might be easier or cheaper to look outside of the city than in the city. Because at that time we lived in San Antonio. It was like the outskirts of San Antonio. And so my parents, they were looking and looking and they were getting desperate because the, you know, the... The people from San Antonio basically said, if you don't start paying up or you don't start 
paying the new rent, we're going to kick you out. So my parents kind of, you know, having kids, three kids at that time, they were frantically trying to to figure out like what to do. So they went on Craigslist. First of all, that's the first bad thing. Um, But they went on Craigslist and they saw this guy that was written the trailer. And so we went to look at it. I was extremely like upset because we had moved a lot over my years of living with my parents and I didn't want to, I didn't want to move. But the first time we went there, I was like, absolutely not. And I wasn't even fully like tuned in. I was definitely blocking at this point, but my mom was pretty much like, Hey, we don't have a choice. This is all we got. So we have, we have to move here. And I was like, but I don't want to move here. This, this is not. And I remember the landlord guy um, telling me that before we lived there, that there was a newspaper, like a local newspaper company that lived that not lived there, but they basically turned the, the trailer into like a, like work area, like not work area, but like where they would print the newspapers and stuff. Yeah. So we moved there and kind of like to compensate moving again, my mom was like, look, you can have the back end of the trailer as like your little like spot because there was a bedroom, which would be my bedroom, a bathroom, um, my sister's room, and then a like storage. We would call it the storage room, but basically extra stuff we'd store in there. And then, you know, you'd go down. It was super long. It was a super long trailer. The kitchen was in the center, the living room, dining room, and a laundry room, and then my parents' room and my other sister's room and all of that stuff was on the other side. So I, and you know, I got like the bigger of the rooms other than my parents' room. So my mom was like, you know, I know we're moving again, but you get the bigger room and all of that. So uh, we stayed, I stayed at the opposite end of the trailer, which I don't know if that was the best decision because I think I ended up getting the worst end of the house. Both of our experiences alone, I would say so. It's funny is that yeah. your your window aimed towards the backyard. It wasn't aimed towards the front of the house. So your your room was essentially the f- one end, but on the back side. So it wasn't facing the highways. It was facing the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have to go. We, I, don't say, I don't say we have to go much in detail about. Yeah, the house. But. So let's like kind of jump, I guess, into encounter stuff. So it's funny. If, do you remember the first experience we had? Um, with I can't. I think of the most expe- like the most prolific ones but i can't think of like the first one that you were telling me about okay so because it was like from living i'm trying to think how many years we lived there it was like two or three and I, me and isaac were dating but him living with us it no was only, it wasn't two or three it was actually a year and a half actually really it was that it was that? very short it, it wasn't we weren't there very long because I, I remember i was thinking to myself is that of all my entire time living on the ranch from like when i was like five yeah until like when I finally moved out of there when I was 20 and all that experience over those like it's 15 years Mm -hmm. was everything that I talk about you know in early episodes but everything else that I talk about the most prolific happened in that short span we lived at the Spring Branch house you say two or three years it wasn't because you remember we dated we lived together Mm -hmm. then I proposed a year and a half of year and eight months of us dating Mm -hmm. then we were married and then less than a month after we married oh yeah we we moved here yeah so we weren't there for more than maybe two years yeah maybe less maybe a year and a half yeah and that's crazy to think about because holy crap (laughs) yeah a lot of stuff happened (laughs) in that short span so for me it would start off the vibe the the vibe in the house was just eerie and it wasn't even at first it wasn't even the the house itself that would freak me out it was the woods that were in the back honestly it was the the person that was next to us that had the vacation house that was another area i would not go my dad and my sisters actually wanted to they as soon as we moved in they started going and uh checking out the woods which i was like hell no i am not going near them Um, because not very far into the woods, I was exploring with my sisters. I said, uh, cause yeah, I was exploring with my sister and I was like, Hey, do you want to go like check out, see what the, the front part of the woods is like, you know? And cause I was asking her, I was like, Hey, do you get like a weird feeling? And she's like, Oh yeah. She's like, I don't like your room either. Or Gwen's room my other sister and she's like i don't like either of those rooms and it's just creepy i was like okay well that's nice 
uh, we go we go into the woods and immediately into the woods we see like small animal skulls in the circle and I immediately knew what that was and I was like hell no we need to get out of these woods let's go and she was like what no it could have been like I mean there's like coyotes and like predatory animals in the woods so that could have been from I'm like yeah but in a perfect circle like what's the odds of that And so we went inside and I really, it wasn't that, it wasn't long into living there that I started seeing things. And my room was probably the worst. So, um, I remember immediately I, I would, I would be in a sleep in bed and the closet door, I would see rattle from the inside, like the, the doorknob shake. And so I was like, all right, well, that's weird. And then I would start waking up at three, obviously in the morning and my closet door would be open, even though I know for sure I shut it. And so, and obviously my closet gave me really bad vibes and I had a mirror on the back of the closet. So I had, you know, I'd seen paranormal shows at that point. So I was like, all right, well, so I started covering the mirror and putting a stack of books in front of my closet to prevent it from opening. And still every night I'd see the uh, door knob rattle. And I used to sleep with my uh, closet, uh, not closet, but the bedroom door open. And then it got to a point where I couldn't do that. I would have to shut the door. I felt like, I don't know. I felt like all hell would break loose when nighttime came. And it was like I was kind of barricading myself in my room because if I left anything kind of open, I felt like I would get not attacked, but like weird stuff would happen. It's funny. You think we think back to that time. People ask, like, well, how did you not know what was going on? You got to remember, this was years ago. We lived here in North Carolina for what, seven years now? Seven years? Yeah. Yeah. We lived there about seven years now. And only, only two years ago. I gained the yeah. ability that I have now. Mm-hmm. And only almost three years ago, Megan is fully enveloped herself in her psychic abilities. Granted, she still had them back way back when, but it was kind of muted. Yeah, I was very much blocking myself. I did not trust me. I was trying my hardest not to see and feel and get what I was getting. Just for everyone listening, you grab that kind of or grasp that kind of reality. Yeah. That we were not at the level we are now. So yeah. everything we talk about experiencing wise, it's just, that's, it's it mainly because it's, it's because we couldn't do anything about it essentially. Yeah. yeah. And two, like I, I noticed too, I would go outside and I would walk. I would always, cause I've always been this way where I would, you know, like put my headphones in and just listen to music. And that was like my, I guess you would say early on, that was how I meditated. And I remember, um, I would put my headphones in and I'd walk around the property and it would be like in this, like not in the woods, but we'd start at this. We had this area where there was like trees and stuff. And so I would walk around and I still always felt weird sh- stuff from the woods and from that weird house. I would always feel watching. And that was one thing my mom, because I actually went back and I specifically talked to my mom and my sisters and stuff like that to get their viewpoint on everything. That is one thing that my mom and my sisters always said. My one sister said, you know, your room, that end of the house was always creepy. The woods always felt like somebody was watching. But one of the things that happened, and I don't know if you were living there with us yet, but it's actually my sister. I have two sisters. One sister is about uh, three and a half years apart from me. And then my youngest sister is 10 years apart from me. My youngest sister was really young. And then my other sister was, you know, close to my age. So she wasn't too far. She was older. And uh, I remember we had this room we would call the movie room. And it was basically just a room with a TV and a couch. And there was no... No windows. No windows. Only one way to get anyone way out was the door. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was in that room. And I hear her calling, going, hey, Megan, 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 because her room was next to mine or next to um, the TV room. I remember her going, Megan, Megan. And I came out and I was like, who are you calling? And she goes, holy crap. And I was like, what? She goes, um, I don't even know what to co- how to comprehend what I just saw. And she basically said that she saw me go from 
the my bedroom, which was at the end of the hall, and my myself go into the bathroom. And she said I was wearing the exact same thing I was. She said what she kept calling, she kept calling, and I didn't turn around. And she said, but she saw me smile, so she thought I was joking with her. That wasn't me. I was not there. Double Gengar. So... I don't know what that was. I mean, I've talked to other psychics in the past about stuff like that. And normally it's like a dark attachment. Something dark is like conveying itself like that. But that's creepy. The fact that she said she saw me smile too. Like that. Oh, that's creepy. When Now, one of the first experiences that I had had to involve an early, I don't say early attachments, but I think early ghosts that were trying to communicate with you. Mm-hmm. Where they are now. I don't know. I think they've kind of moved on and stuff like that. But yeah. I remember when we originally met you, first time we met, um, you had five ghosts to follow you. And mm-hmm. I always tell people, shit, you had five ghosts. What, you had an old man, like an elderly man, mm-hmm. right? You had a teenage girl on the age of 14 from the colonial times that you mm-hmm. actually physically saw. Uh, two little kids, mm-hmm. right, a boy and a girl. And then the, a, an asshole, we call that. Because yeah. he, he maybe on the age of late 30s, early 40s, but he was just an asshole. Like he was the over possessive one that always causes problems kind of yeah. guy and he was the one that i remember one of the nights that i stayed over one of the first nights at that place i called out yeah and i got scratched on my back mm-hmm. that we oh, could yeah. physically see four marks going straight down like someone had their hand and went like wow right yeah and which was strange because we usually see three with any demonic activity you see three claw marks right it's four like a human hand so there is a differentiation when scratching when it comes to three to four lines that we figured out there yeah but yeah, he I, I basically called him I think a piece of crap or something like that and he's he's scratched my back and I felt my back burning and you looked up like I said, you get scratches on your back and like what? Yeah. That was my first encounters there. But I guess time spent with me moving in and then just like random shadow figures, uh hearing whisperings, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um to the the sounds of like claws on the walls too, that was another thing. Yeah. That But um, the one of the most the I guess my most I mean, granted, that, that, you know, funny enough, that was the first house I experienced sleep uh, paralysis. Yeah. That was the first one. Because, well, I had my messed up sleep schedule. Of, you know, I worked overnight, so I had to be awake during the day. But sometimes I would sleep at night with you. And just that off, on, off, on, off, on kind of schedule yeah. really put me in a state to experience it. But I remember one time I would, had a sleep paralysis episode something. But I, I thought I was streaming, but all the lights were off in the house, in the, in the trailer. And I get at, looked in the hallway, and I see everyone else. With flashlights looking around, looking for something. And I tried to yell for you. Like, hey guys, what's going on? But I couldn't say anything because I felt like someone had their hand over my mouth. Dang. Preventing me from talking. And mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, and I remember pushing myself and then I kind of woke up. But I didn't wake up. I My eyes woke up and I was frozen in place. I had my arms crossed like I usually do when I sleep, I sleep on my mm-hmm. side. And I remember feeling hands push me. And I remember I couldn't move, you know, sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. And I remember it being pushed slowly from my side to laying on my back. Oh my gosh. Right? And I, I couldn't move, right? I couldn't mm-hmm. physically move. I was frozen in place, but I was so angry that I couldn't do it that I broke out of it. And I, I woke up. But that was a, a, you know intense experience. But the most intense, oh, and I've man. told a hundred times yeah. already, and you probably heard in early episodes of Haunted Experiences, but we're talking about Spring Branch, so it has to come up, is when you <laughs> were being attacked, I think, or something. And I always tell people the same story over and over again, but essentially it is, uh, I woke up randomly middle of the night and you always like to sleep on my chest with my arm around you. And, uh, I wake, I wake up and I'm, I, 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 I like, oh, what time is it? I look at my phone, it's like three fifty, right? Three, mm-hmm. like three fifty. And I, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I started hearing scratching and the room was loud. Like the fan was spinning up above mm-hmm. us going, whoa, 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 like, why is it so damn loud in here? And here it's scratching and crawling like like a bunch of nails on the walls all around me. Mm-hmm. I look, what the fuck is going on here? And I look at you to see if you hear this, and you're like twitching in your sleep, like your head's like like you're being electrocuted in your sleep, but your eyes are closed. Mm-hmm. You're not making any sound. And I'm like, what, what? What the? When I look at you, like what the? And I look up in the corner because I can feel like this hate and heat, just like aimed at me like someone was that, that horrible horrible stink guy just staring mm-hmm. at you with intense anger and hatred right mm-hmm. and i look up in the corner of the room to my right so it had to be the upper corner i just see a black shadow with two red eyes in Ooh. it right yeah. and i'm like oh fuck I'm like what the hell is that now obviously i knew what it was because well i would do the demon but i just know what kind anyway but i did the only thing that came to my mind at the moment 
was I crossed your forehead like mm-hmm. priests do, right? Yeah. And you instantly stopped. And then I just felt that hate, anger come at me more. I look at the shadow and I look at my phone to see what time it is because I'm in the whole, whole witching hour thing. And I see 3.59, boom, 4 o'clock, and silence. Dang. Everything went silent. Shadow was gone. Scratching was gone. The sound of the fan was gone. It was all quiet. I think I sat there for almost like 10 minutes afterwards, looking around, waiting for something to happen, looking at you. <laughs> I think I, I think I tried to wake you up like, Megan, Megan, you're like, what? I was like, you just you, like, whatever. And he's kind of like rolled over on your side and went back to sleep. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to have to stay awake with this. I think I'll stay awake for maybe, maybe until like 4.30, just waiting for something to happen. Nothing did. Yeah. And I finally went back to sleep. But I remember I told you about it the next morning mm-hmm. and you were freaking out. Yeah, because at that point, like I, I knew a lot of stuff was happening and I was, like I said, I, I knew the backstory too with my mom and my grandmother having abilities and I just was at a point where I just did not want to deal with it because I was scared of the dark stuff. Kind of like when people reach out to us and they're like scared to dig into their abilities because of what they're going to see. And I had absolutely no control and none at at all. I didn't know anything about protection. I didn't know anything. I just thought these things could come in and, and wreak havoc. And there was one time, and it's kind of funny because it kind of coincides with what you saw. There was one time before you moved in, and this is when I started working at McDonald's. And again, I just with meditation, I, I you know, all the stuff working. It was one of my first jobs and I was working at McDonald's and it was right before I was getting ready to go into work and my dad had just put up a like this swing thing it was like a typical like old swing that you would tie to the tree and we had this big huge I don't even know what kind of tree it was but this huge tree had huge limbs and my dad tied this uh, swing to it to go on and the way like we didn't have really a backyard it was like gravel Because basically you had to go up and around to go into the driveway. So I was sitting on the swing and I was listening to music and I was swinging. And of course, I would feel the the eyes watching me from the woods, but I wouldn't really react to it. I always thought, okay, well, if I don't react to it, I don't try and like tune into it, I'll be fine. So I remember I was swinging and I I didn't want to get too high because I was like, I don't know how, how well this swing is put up here. I don't want to like fall off of it or whatever. So I was swinging and I start getting out of control and I, I, I swing and I stop the swing. I, you know, pause my music. I'm looking around because I keep hearing like distant growling. I keep hearing weird things. And I was like, okay. So I stopped, looked around, nothing. I still feel like a watching feeling from the woods stupid me i don't even like stop or go inside i keep swinging something keeps telling me like keep swinging it's fine nothing nothing to worry about so i keep swinging and i start going faster and faster and i start getting in almost like a trance where i'm just like pumping my legs and going higher and higher and higher and higher and i felt this really eerie feeling but i couldn't like snap out of it and i i'm going higher and higher and all of a sudden I, you know, because I keep hearing, look at the woods, look at the woods, look at the woods. And then I hear, look at the woods, right? And as I look at the woods, I see this big shadow thing. The swing as it's going up snaps, right? I hit the dr- gravel driveway and I get flung forward like the ra- like the rope wrapped around my ankle and dragged me back, right? I have this massive bruise. I'm bleeding And I literally start crying because I literally was up in the air and I hit the ground pretty hard and it was gravel and I'm crying. And as I'm looking up, like I'm literally like, oh my God, that freaking hurt. (laughs) Like I'm, I'm legit crying and I look up and I see this massive shadow thing with red eyes, like what kind of what you saw, but it wasn't like crawly. It was just massive. And I remember as soon as I saw it, I got up as quick as I could and ran inside. And my mom, like, I had to call out of work. It was this huge black and, like, purple bruise. And blood was, like, drenched down. I had rock, like, stuck in my skin. And that was the first time, though, that I physically was hurt. And I tried having, like, friends of mine, like, stay over and stuff like that. And they wouldn't even do it. So... And Marie told yeah. me, I was like, what? 
Yeah. Sure you, did, did you just fall off? And no. Then Even my dad, my dad checked and there was no, no explanation as to why this swing. Because, I mean, I weighed maybe 115 pounds. I was like the thinnest I ever was. And, I mean, he said like it, it's sturdy. I don't understand why it, why it even snapped. And, uh, like, it took months for that to heal, too. Like, it was just bad. But another thing I kind of want to mention, too, you know, this is more of the paranormal side of stuff, but the overall feel of everybody in the house was bad, too. Constantly getting sick. Like, I remember my mom, uh, she actually went a period of time where when the stuff really started amping up, like, it really started getting bad, like close to around that time when you saw that thing. Um, my mom, my mom got in a very, very depressive state while living there. Like it was bad. It was basically, she was a walking zombie and, uh, she actually had problems with her teeth coming out. Like she, the doctors couldn't explain why she had deteriorating teeth. And then on top of that, she would get like these random fever things where, like, she would have a fever, she would go to the doctor, and they would not be able to diagnose what was wrong with her. And uh, with me, too, I even had really bad throw-up spells. Like, where, you know, you could say, oh, you eat something bad. But it was it was really bad. It would come out of nowhere, too. I'd just be talking, and all of a sudden, bleh. And it was like exorcist throw up. It was bad. I remember, too, when I went back and I asked my grandmother... Uh, who stayed there for a little bit, my dad, my mom, my sisters, like what, what was, what what did you feel when you were there? You know, because my sisters, they really, like, they believe in the paranormal, but they really just don't, uh, they don't want to know, like, look too much into it. They just don't like it. Not that they don't like it. They're scared of it, essentially, and they just don't want to look too much into it. And uh, both my siblings basically said, like, the rooms, the land, the woods were just bad. Um, my dad, he's another one. He wants to believe in the paranormal, but not really. He's kind of more on the skeptic side. So he was, you know, he tries to find rationality with like everything. Like even if it's hundred percent foolproof, like it's the, something paranormal, something you can't explain. He still says it's like, oh, well it could be this, you know, he's very, doesn't want to believe the paranormal exists, but does at the same time. It's weird. So he really didn't like say there was much he kind of basically told me the history and stuff that he found out there and then my mom you know always having being sick and then my grandmother she said when she went there um it almost felt like things were coming in from the woods and she said uh which I even completely forgot about this my grandmother for anybody who listens she's really she's like a clean freak she's almost OCD with cleaning mm. everything has to be spick and span like very clean and so and it's almost like she enjoys cleaning (laughs) so like she does it just sometimes to do it and um she kept telling me she didn't like like my bathroom like my bathroom gave her weird vibes which i would love for you to go now and pull that mirror because i feel like that mirror in the bathroom was not good well um before we get into our theories um and yeah he said, before we get into our theories about what we think the house is and what we, all like that and how we would take care of it, mm-hmm. right? I guess we'll talk a little more few encounters before we get into that part of the thing because yeah. I, I can tell you what exactly um, what I feel is there, uh-huh. right? But uh, one of the other encounters I guess I experienced, um, funny enough, in that room, yeah, uh, the uh, TV room, yeah. right? I was sitting, I was laying on the our very uncomfortable t- chair. Twin. Yeah, it was the, we were in a <laughs> we were in a bad spot financially too. Yeah. So, well, it's like not really good fit in that room because it's so tiny. Yeah. But um, right behind me, mm-hmm. corner, like I said, no way in and no way out. If I'm the only one in the room, no one enters the room without me seeing them. Yeah, I heard a little girl's voice right behind me. I mean, my my, my ear I go Isaac, right, mm-hmm. very close. I'm like, hey, I thought it was I thought it was like your sister or something like mm-hmm. snuck in there. Mm-mm. No one was in there. Dang. Besides sleep paralysis and then your shit and then seeing shadow figures and then hearing a tapping on the mirror while you were doing your, getting your makeup ready one oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was another thing. Yeah. I didn't even mention that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ta- I was doing makeup and you could hear tapping from inside the mirror. Yeah. Um, Going back to my grandmother, though, 
uh, she stayed there for a good chunk of time. She got sick, remember? And she's still dealing with stuff today from the time that she got sick there. Um, but I remember she was like, I don't know, something's, something's weird with this bath bathtub. Uh, give me Clorox, because she's like, Clorox everything. Like, that's just her. And so she got the I did the Clorox, and I was like, what are you doing? It's clean. And she was like, I know, but it's something weird. And I remember black stuff started oozing from out of the tub and still to this day she says she's never seen that happen like she's cleaned tons of beach condos she's cleaned people's houses she says she's still to this day you know that have like the best of the best toilets and and tubs and stuff like that to like the worst of tubs like the cheapest tubs and she said she still have never seen black stuff ooze from inside the tub i mean we even had uh like weird things with the animals too do you remember that like how they were just dropping dead yeah that's a lot of pets a lot of pets just would drop dead um and i remember once we moved out my mom was even saying like all of the animals were just dying just dying and it was only ours on that side of the property like there was a guy eventually that actually rented one of the sheds and lived in the sheds which i know that's weird but that was a setup. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, um, cause he knew the landlord personally and he lived in one of the sheds, like they converted it into like a tiny house and he lived there and he had a dog and his dog was fine. And I asked him, I specifically said, was there like maybe vaccines or something that your da- dog has? He goes, actually, no, I've never had my dog like vaccinated. Like he hasn't had his shots. Like he's just like a, as he would call it a country dog. Like that's <laughs> what he literally said. And so, yeah, so I don't understand what it was like. They would get really, really sick and just die. We'd take them to the vets. They wouldn't know what was wrong with it. And then there was even that one time, and I've told it on the podcast too, where it was like a a physical people were um, came to the trailer. I was home by myself. You had left for work. My parents weren't there. They went to Austin, which was like an hour and a half away, hour away. And I remember I got a really bad feeling and I was thinking about calling you and saying, hey, is there any way to call out of work and come back? I don't want to stay by myself. And basically a group of people were beating on the trailer and I was, I locked myself in the storage room or not the storage room, the room with no windows. And I had the dogs in there with me. So if anybody came in, they could attack. My parents had two German shepherds and, uh. I remember my dad like not believing me because when he came home, there was nobody, nobody around. And I was like, dad, I'm not kidding. Like nobody just goes on the trailer and beats on it, you know? And, uh, they're like, no, it's probably, you watch too many scary movies, horror movies. Like there's nothing. I'm like, dad, there, no, there was someone here banging on the trailer. Like I even called my grandmother crying because I was like, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to die. Like someone is trying to break in. And, um, I don't know why I didn't call the cops up. That's probably a dumb idea. But, you know, I was a young adult. So, I mean, the next day my my parents went and they, sure enough, found footprints that weren't any of theirs. Found beer cans in the trash can that my parents and none of us drink. So there's no reason why there would be beer cans in our trash can because our trash can was right up at the back door. So it was just overall, it was bad luck. It was sickness it was just bad vibes. I mean, nothing would go right. My dad would got fired from multiple different jobs while we lived there. Like I said, my mom, multiple different health issues. I mean, even myself, like I, my health was never the same after I lived there. I have thyroid problems. I know I've said that multiple times on here. Um, and ever since I lived in that house, they've never been able to regulate my thyroid properly. I don't know why. It could just be a coincidence, but at the same time, there's no such thing as coincidences in my book. And, yeah. So. Now, a little history on the place. Yeah. Because there was some history that was pertained, uh, what was kept from us, at least, or I don't think anybody really knew. And this is why um, those who are in the paranormal enthusiasts, like ourselves, I know for sure I always ask anytime we're if if we ever get a new place. Yeah. Or even an apartment or something like that, right? A new place to live and stuff like that. I always ask, so uh, do people report ghosts here? Or did someone yeah. die in a house pre- uh, recently before this uh, pre- previous owner? 
or even last owner. I always ask those questions because I wonder what I'm dealing with. Though I don't think we have to ask now because you probably just walk in there automatically yeah. know. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but for so, everybody else, yeah, probably ask those questions. So apparently, I didn't even know this till recently. Um, my I had talked to my mom about like the history. I was telling her, you know, I was trying to find the history on it of that, like the land itself. Um, and she was saying that, oh, well, the neighbor who had the vacation house, this has been in her family for a while. And she had said the the story or the history that was passed down was that in this area, there was German settlements, which is, if you look in the history of Spring Branch itself, that is actually accurate. There was, um, I think like four families that were German, of German descent that settled in the area. Around this er area, around the area, there was German settlements or I don't know if it was if it was German settlements or if it was German settlements that massacred natives or natives that matter that massacred the German settlement area, kind of like the Lake Shawnee situation where like they went after the uh, the native tribes there went after the settle settlement you know uh, I forgot his name Mitchell Clay I think if it was kind of like that kind of situation, but there was an area this this area by where the uh, vacation house was and it was a beautiful meadow i've never seen a, like a meadow before like a valley meadow type situation but it was beautiful it was such a good vibe compared to everything else and i think that is honestly where like there was a native burial ground if i had to guess i feel like it would have been right there because it was beautiful lush Did green grass did your dad find a wall from yeah like a civil so war or something? My like that? dad actually found um, the old foundation of a house that was probably dated back from those times. It was in the middle of the woods. Him and my sister went pretty far back. They found arrowheads. They found like weird artifacts, but at the very like center of the woods, um, they went all the way back. Probably like a hundred yards from the, the actual house. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's some corresponding details with what, you know, the neighbor was saying. Also, there was, so one of the things that I, you know, because I did all this research, I messaged the, like the Spring Branch archive people, but they really didn't have anything. And I even went on a website that supposedly tells you like property owners and details and stuff like that. Because I want to see if maybe I could reach out to that one owner of the vacation house and it doesn't even register anymore that that's a property. Like, I don't know why, but it doesn't register that it's an actual property, but apparently spring branch is known for paranormal stuff. So I went on this site that I talk about frequently on the podcast in general. Um, I think it's like ghost sightings of America and you can narrow it down to your city and people post when they have experiences and spring branch, there was only five because Spring Branch is small. But so one of the things that this one guy was saying was that uh, I think it's like Singing Hills, which is not far off from where we lived. It's about 12, 11, 11 to 12 miles down the road. And they said the reason why it's called Singing Hills is because of the paranormal activity that people hear. They hear crazy stuff like chanting and, and singing and weird stuff. And uh, it was actually on a native burial. He said Indian Cemetery, but I feel like it was supposed to be native burial ground. Yeah. But yeah, so he was saying that um, there was another story, a very similar situation. The person didn't actually specify where that the encounters like took place, but they were saying that this house that they had in 2000, I think, three or four, that they would hear the same things. Things would be moved in the house. Uh, they were actually nervous that it would it was poltergeist activity, like that kind of stuff. Um, same thing with like us. We would see stuff move. You know, you'd put it one place, it would disappear, that kind of thing. And it was almost like when you would go to sleep at night, like you'd lock yourself in and it would be really weird if you got out and walked around in the middle of the night, if that makes sense. I know living at this house, my sister always slept in my room because of just the activity and all the weird stuff. There's also um, some talk, too, about the devil's backbone, which is you know exactly where it is. Of course I do. I lived in Blinko for like 20-something years. Tw 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20-something years. 
it was a while. Um, and it was always talked about in my high school stuff like that. It's a highway that the Luigi that people from Blanco would take mm-hmm. to get to St. Marcus, the fastest way. Went up the mountain, went up the mountains or hills called the hill mm-hmm. country for a reason. Mm-hmm. I would call it mountains, but the hills did get pretty steep in some places. And the reason it was called Devil's Backbone because it was a winding, twisting highway that went through the hills. And the crappy part about it is that it uh, had a very, like, you would get right next to the cliff face to fall off and, like, slide down about a good, I don't know, I don't want to say how story wise, but maybe like 10 or 9 stories down a hill into, like, you know, just wilderness and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it was like a steep. You know, you'd fall off. You're you're guaranteed your car's gonna roll over and it might explode, or you're gonna die going down this. So yeah. usually they tell people not to speed down this highway and stuff yeah. like that. But of course, dumb kids always do. And yes, people have died on this highway. Died in a sense like accidents, or um, they their car slid off the edge and they rolled down the hill and basically got exploded, or the person died and stuff like that. Funny enough, I always heard these stories, and then my freshman year, year of high school. Um, one kid who's a senior who mm-hmm. I never knew, but there was a guy that <laughs> I was a freshman getting to the whole rocker scene and stuff like that, became a metalhead and all that. And we had a senior who was like the only rocker guy in band because I was a marching band. Mm-hmm. And he was cool, like, oh, he's the rocker guy. Everyone wants to be his friend. Oh, like that. Yeah. All those rebellious kids. Oh, he's the one to look up to, right? He was our hero. Um, he was like the Eddie Munson, let's say that. Yeah. He was Eddie Munson of my high school and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But not like he was ridiculed or anything like that, but all the high school kids that were rocker kids looked up to him, right? Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, he knew the guy who died Dang. in our high school. He knew the guy who went one night down there was backbone, probably drunk, um, and his car slid off the edge and he rolled down the entire, the hillside and died. But yeah, that was like people have told me a hundred times that things have happened that way. I've heard stories, the legends. If you lived in Blanco for way more than three years, you. People have told you stuff like, oh, so-and-so died there. It goes all the way back to like when the highway was built, right? That's it's such a bad highway. And <laughs> I was like, funny enough, I actually drove it a couple of times. And yeah, it is steep. Like I remember I got to a turn where I, I took kind of funny. I looked over the edge like, oh my God, it's so close. Uh, and it's it's it doesn't feel creepy. It's just, it just it's so dangerous. Right? It's so dangerous and stuff like that. But what was the devil's backbone associated with that? So, apparently, there's a massive area that is nothing but limestone over there. And limestone has been known to also amplify paranormal activity. That makes sense to where at my ranch now. Mm Because we had a lot of limestone underneath the land there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Also... There, there's also a lot of talk when I was also looking at the, that same, that ghost sightings of America that also talked about how a lot of the area had slaves. And obviously with that, there was a lot of uh, brutality. And so depending on your land, you could have that history as well. Um, Like I said, unfortunately, I couldn't like pinpoint what it was. But the thing is, is I think. We're going to go into theories now. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that there is two things going on with the land. I have been places now where I know satanic rituals and dark sacrificing situations have occurred. And I felt that energy current. Like I felt it uh, like within the last year. I know what that energy feels like. And I go back those woods. There's people doing stuff like that. That is one separate thing. Now, the separate, other separate thing is like the actual paranormal stuff behind it, which was the native stuff. And the thing is with the native stuff is I don't think like that stuff was there to harm us. It was just there. Like I, you know, immediately when we went into that valley, I was told like, don't go over there. Just, just leave this area alone. And so I did. I did that. And I feel like that. That was not where the bad stuff was coming from. The bad stuff was coming from whatever rituals, whatever weird stuff was being done in the woods. And I think maybe, you know, you try and find any kind of negative, you know, like how we were talking about in the amusement park episode, how positive ghosts, like the ghosts that were found at like the Disney parks and stuff like that, because that's such a, a place where everyone's vibes are positive that they capitalize on the fact that those positive vibes 
So their energy is amplified that way. So if a negative entity goes to a negative spot, and so because of the massacre and so many people were killed and stuff, whether it was either way, whether it was natives that killed the German settlers or German settlers killed the natives, either way, um, there was massive death, anger, rage, like very low vibrational feelings associated with that. So anybody that has negative intentions, of course, would capitalize on that plot of land using that dark energy that was there. Plus, there's already bloodshed on the land. So that works for them. Well, funny enough, uh, my theory coincided with yours, but I think I'll add a little bit more or at least mm -hmm. add around it and yeah. stuff like that. So the massacre happened there, mm -hmm. all that bloodshed, all that torment, and probably other mm -hmm. wars happened around the area oh, as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, 100%. So, yeah. Um, but you did your bear grass so put off an area and you felt so much peace from it. I don't think that was an area source of any kind of productivity. I think it was keeping everything pushed back from that spot towards where we lived. And either currently or at that time, somebody did satanic rituals there and brought or demons came because there's so much negative energy there. So much torment, so much uh, sadness, sorrow that they felt, oh, great, this is a perfect for place for us to feed and for us to be here and mm -hmm. feed off all this negative energy that's here and stay here. Mm -hmm. And then whoever comes here will also, you know, to strengthen us, we'll get torment and dwelled. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, comes a Vikic who is, uh, is there for them and is living there, right? Along with another family of, of people who have psychic potential ability. Mm -hmm. And then I come in the picture and stuff like that, who is, I kind of disrupt a lot of things for him because I was, I was a positive to, to their negative and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was already marked for attack, essentially like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that was the, the formula of why that place was so haunted. Because I think about places we've been to before where it was at that level haunted. And mm -hmm. there's always so much darkness there. There's some reason why darkness attracted there. Either it was attracted or it was put. Mm -hmm. There's something Somebody put this here and it's stuck there now. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that's why other spirits that we came across uh, were there. You know what I'm thinking now? Hmm. What if the five spirits that were attached to you got left behind there when we left? The old man, the yeah. little kids, the girl, right? Because I haven't experienced anything of them since we moved here. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, which makes <laughs> the next part where I'm thinking about a little more, um, uh, we call it, needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what's it, we have to have more... Uh, the word I'm looking for. Urgency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have more urgency uh, in getting done with what, what my theory is, is that I need to pull mm -hmm. from there because mm -hmm. there's so much darkness there. And who knows what other spirits got trapped by just like this whirlwind of, of whatever's there. And we don't even know if it's if it's one demon. It might be more. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I say with confidence that there is most likely a demon there from what I saw, from what you saw, from what you experienced, from what I experienced, and from the overall, this is a perfect feeding ground for them oh i didn't even tell okay really quick i'm going to tell this encounter story because this kind of coincides with demonic stuff a little bit okay so we had a family friend his name is steven he's pretty much like an uncle to my siblings and stuff like that like he he we actually my dad actually met him while we were living there and uh I remember he was staying over for some reason. I don't know if it was like my mom just wanted an extra person. You were working overnight or my dad and him had some kind of cycling weird thing to go to. Um, Cause they, that's what they bond over, I guess is like cycling and uh, mountain bike riding and all that stuff. And I remember I was sleeping in my room. My sister was sleeping and I remember he was actually sleeping in the spare bedroom the storage room, right? And he is a very, you know him, Isaac knows him, and he can attest, very happy-go-lucky, kind of like no care in the world, like doesn't get angry, like very chill person. Um, and I remember we, I, I always had the TV on, and I know for sure I closed the door. I know for sure I closed the door. And I, I feel someone watching me and I'm like, what the hell? Right. So I open my eyes and he's standing in the door frame, right? Just staring. And he's not the type to do this. Like he would be like, Hey Megan, you know, Hey, like I need something or wear something. Right. And I was like, snipe. I know I closed that door. 
And so I see him just staring and it is a completely, like, it looks like a totally different person. And I nudged my sister awake and she was like, oh my God, what's wrong with him, right? Because he was just staring. He wasn't saying anything. He kept kind of looking over to the TV and then looking at us. And I, I my sister even said, like, holy crap, was, I feel like we're in a horror movie. Like, what do, what do we do? What do we do? And my mom was on the other side of the house. So it's not like I could scream, you know, something. Anyways, I remember him looking at us and I was like, Steven. Steven, hey, snap out of it. What are you doing? What are you doing? And I remember he laughed, turned around, went back in the storage room and went to sleep. And I remember I literally closed my door and put something in front of it. And I remember the next morning I asked him, I said, Steven, what were you doing in my room? Like in the door frame? You didn't come in my room, but you were in the door frame. And he goes, huh? I don't know what are you talking about. I didn't leave the room. I was like, no, uh, you like, he's like, I had a dream, a weird dream last night, but I didn't leave the room. I don't remember leaving the room. And I was like, and I told him and he was like, well, I don't remember that. So yeah. And it almost looked like, cause I couldn't see cause the shadow of the, the thing, but his eyes looked weird. His face, like it was like, it literally was like a horror movie. Like that, what is that new movie? The smile movie that is coming out. Where it was like that, you know, before they they smile and do the weird thing, they have like that blank stare. Mm. That's exactly what he looked like. I mean, his face didn't look like his face. Yeah, but back to what I was saying about they're in a land. I think it's I think it's 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 so much negativity there that there is demonic activity there. From like we said, from either it was brought there or it came there on its own acti- on accord, and people re- those who worship it uh, realized that it was there. Hence, why you saw the weird. Um, Artifacts. Yeah. So, if we were to go there mm-hmm. on our journey back you know to where Texas, where I'm going, straight in those woods. But um, yeah, that's gonna be one of our pinpoint places to to eradicate. You yeah. Would say. Well, one of the things that was interesting is I did look at because Google Maps. You know how like sometimes they don't update, and it's been like past years or whatever. I looked, and it's it's a little bit different. Someone else owns the property, I believe, but they have a massive electrical unit. Right smack dab in front of the trailer. So if there is anything paranormal wise, I'm sure they are getting a bunch of stuff from the electrical unit that's there. It's just like an electrical supply. Like, I don't know why it's there. It's just there. The little sheds that are there, you can rent as little cabins to stay there. So if we do go to San Antonio, because they're not going to legislate, especially if you talk about like, yeah. You know how some people are? Some people don't like you to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if we stayed there, quotation marks, stayed there and said, oh, do you mind if we stroll around the land? You know? Why do you have cameras? Why do you have this? Yeah. yeah. Why, like, why is that ghost know. equipment? No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think that wraps up what yeah. we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. If we, I think we have more stories on it just are scattered amongst our scary stories episodes one through four yeah. and in different episodes across our entire uh year of years of doing podcasting yeah. um but a few announcements uh bonus episode coming out this wednesday mm-hmm. uh is my interview with the uh screen play writers uh and of course the writers of the whole story but also they also were producers executive producers on the film for the movie uh the Retaliators. Yeah, the horror movie The Retaliators is coming. Well, no, it's already out. Yeah, well, it's yeah. in select theaters. It's making yeah. its way out here. But I think you can go to different places to find out where it is. But what's interesting about this film, which I never thought was really cool, mm-hmm. is that there's so many rock stars in the film. Yeah. And one of my favorites, uh, uh, Spencer from I Sign Kills. Yeah. He's in the film. Also, he puts uh, a track on the soundtrack for the film. Mm-hmm. So this like is a lot of like, I think was it uh Motley Crue, I think uh Papa Roach, um yeah, Ice Nine Kills, uh different rock stars. Yeah. Are in the film ones, yeah. are in the film acting and it also contributing to the soundtrack altogether. So I was like, yeah. Oh my god, this is awesome. And they were fans of the, the show. show. Yeah. Thunk it. So they they asked if uh, we wanna do an interview. It's like, Oh yeah, sweet. So it was a good interview. We talked music, we talked movies and stuff like that, so I uh, look forward to that on Wednesday. Definitely a good one to swing into the Halloween season with. 
Yeah. Especially the, when they explain the, the reasoning from the film and stuff like that, you're going to want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. And then Friday, we actually have uh, a little mini podcast that I'm doing where I'm going and digging into encounter stories of people that have experienced like different paranormal stuff. So you guys get an extra dosage of basically a listener submission story, but episode without like Isaac. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the best way I can just describe the episode, but they're going to alternate with our round table episodes. So one week we'll have the encounter story episode and then the following week will be the paranormal round tables. Yes. The round tables. Uh, look forward to that to the month this month. Yeah. Um, where I got them done and recorded. So they are interesting conversations in the aspects of paranormal investigating, psychics, and the paranormal world all together. It's two different tables. Uh, I think the only people that repeat are Mike, or who's on our paranormal team, mm -hmm. which he adds more perspective in the second round table than he does the first. Yeah. I, I can say that much. Yeah. Like from the first time we did the round table, he was, he added here things and then there, but the second one, I think he had more of a, a greater perspective in it, which if you listen to any of them, I would listen to both, but if you want to hear more of Mike's perspective, the second one has more of it. Yeah. In it. And, yeah. um, we'll... I'm going to be posting this week about who's on which ones. First episode, we have Peta uh, from Ethereal. I'm probably butchering that. She's going to Ethereal. Yeah. yeah. Sisters Paranormal. She has excellent perspectives as well. Uh, Cold Spot Research Paranormal is also on there. An Urban Explorer from San Antonio, Keeper of the Second. He's going to be... He's on the first episode as well. And then the second episode has... Uh, a little bit more teams, I guess you could say. Yeah. That definitely different people from different areas, different backgrounds. So, I think there was psychics on both, paranormal investigation yeah. teams on both, and, or, and urban and explorers, explorers on, on both. both. So yeah. yeah, so you get a different perspectives from the same kind of fields on both both episodes. So that's yeah. what's very interesting about it. Um, so yeah, look forward to those this month. Uh, second one's pretty long, but I think we're gonna break it apart to make it easier for you. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. I, I always say that I try to make it an hour, but it always seems to go an hour and a half to two. So yeah. just having that many people all discussing what their favorite topic, yeah, it's going to be a little lengthy. But yeah, look for those episodes, guys, uh, coming out this month, especially the bonus one coming out this Wednesday. Um, but yeah, so you can, I think, uh, you can get or I think that kind of need any more announcements. I can't think of anything. Um, as far as bringing on people, bonus episode wise for the rest of the month. Um, I'm going to bring on V from Life is Life Paranormal Life Paranormal with V. I don't know why I'm butchering her podcast <laughs> name. I will correct it in the episode description, but she's going to come on and hopefully we can talk about past lives and more about the ability side if you guys want to know more about abilities cuz she is well equipped. I go to her for a lot of my questions that I have that I don't haven't already experienced her and Mike are pretty much my go-to people but she will definitely be able to provide a lot of insight she has a lot of experience and then also Yami I'm going to be interviewing from Crypt to Chat with Yami again it's always a good time when she comes on so yeah yeah so guys you can get to our social media Hidden the Shadows podcast on Instagram Hidden the Shah 6 on Twitter Hidden the Podcast 2 on TikTok or links to all our social media and all ways to listen to us at Hidden the Shadows podcast.com yeah, and we'll catch your widows in the next one. Yeah. Monster